Welcome to a new episode of Cheaters Always Cheat. Like, subscribe, and share to stay connected. I've been married for 23 years to what I've always regarded as my ideal partner. She's remarkably beautiful, intelligent, outgoing, and possesses a genuinely kind heart. I'm 57 years old, and she's 55. Despite our contrasting personalities, I tend to be more introverted, rational, and inclined towards intellectual pursuits, while she exudes extroversion, intuition, and empathy, we complement each other perfectly. Our shared passions and mutual love for similar activities have led us to explore numerous destinations during extensive travels, alongside our three children, two daughters and a cherished unexpected son who is now 15. Our eldest daughter, 20, is currently a sophomore in college, residing approximately 150 miles away. We've been fortunate enough to indulge in family vacations every five months or so, often venturing to new locales, particularly islands and beachfront paradises. Our family is in excellent health, and our children bring us immeasurable happiness. At times, we even extend invitations to family and friends, covering their travel and accommodation expenses. Life, in this regard, has been exceedingly rewarding. Before my current marriage, I endured a four-year union that was far from harmonious. In retrospect, I attribute the discord to my youth, immaturity, and emotional dependence during that period. Looking back, I suspect my former wife may have been grappling with a personality disorder, leading to tumultuous later years together. Her unexpected request for a divorce, rooted in reasons that were initially unfathomable to me, later revealed itself to be a response to either emotional or physical infidelity. While the divorce proceedings were swift, they were marked by bitter financial disputes. Nevertheless, the conclusion of that chapter left me with a profound sense of relief, and I harbor no regrets about its closure. Professionally, I enjoyed a successful career trajectory, attaining senior positions within a global company at a relatively young age. However, my professional journey was unexpectedly curtailed due to a rare disease that caused progressive hearing loss. Fortunately, prudent financial management, including careful savings and astute investments over the years, has ensured our financial stability. While I appreciate the freedom to focus on managing my investments, I do miss the collaborative environment of leading professional teams towards achieving ambitious goals. Our marital relationship has evolved from the fervor of youthful love into a bond characterized by maturity and stability. We are fortunate to have support systems that enable us to enjoy outings together, both as a couple and as a family. However, the challenges posed by my hearing impairment have been profound. The inability to actively participate in group conversations has made me feel isolated on occasion, a situation that frustrates both my wife and myself. The resultant shift towards introversion has altered my social dynamics, and I find myself longing for the days when I could engage freely in lengthy discussions without the fear of missing crucial details. Recently, I found myself harboring unsettling suspicions regarding my wife's behavior, particularly concerning her interactions with my 21-year-old son's closest friend. These doubts began to take root approximately three months ago, shortly before a planned family vacation. It was during the preparations for this trip that I overheard a conversation in our kitchen, where my wife seemed unusually intent on persuading someone to accompany us. Her demeanor, normally warm and composed, betrayed a hint of urgency and secrecy, prompting me to pause and observe. Caught off guard by my presence, she appeared visibly startled, almost dropping her phone in her haste to regain composure. Her subsequent attempt to mask her unease only heightened my curiosity, leaving me perplexed and unsettled by the exchange. Adding to my disquiet are her frequent social engagements, particularly dinners with a select group of married friends, a routine she finds challenging to decline. While we typically coordinate our schedules with family and friends well in advance, her recent behavior has deviated from this established norm. These observations have fueled my growing apprehension, leading me to wonder if there might be more to her actions than meets the eye. In conclusion, while our marriage has been largely fulfilling and enriched by shared experiences, recent events have cast a shadow of doubt over the harmony we once enjoyed. These concerns weigh heavily on my mind, prompting me to seek clarity and understanding in the face of uncertainty. After confirming my dinner choice again, I left the kitchen to join my children in the living room, where we were watching TV. Shortly afterward, we all gathered at the dining table with my wife, engaging in dinner conversation that touched on school, friends, and various topics. It was during this mealtime discussion that my wife mentioned receiving a text from my son's friend, Jason, expressing interest in joining us on our upcoming vacation. This immediately caught my son's attention, as he hadn't informed Jason about our plan since he intended to invite his girlfriend instead. 
However, my son did acknowledge receiving a similar request from Jason shortly before. My son sought our input before responding to his friend's request and appreciated my wife's initiative in bringing it up. Given my son's plan to bring his girlfriend on the trip, it seemed a bit unusual to also invite Jason, who might expect to spend most of his time with his new romantic interest. Additionally, I couldn't shake the suspicion that my wife wasn't completely transparent about the circumstances of Jason's text. I began to wonder if she might have been the one persuading him to join our vacation during a previous phone call, despite implying that Jason had initiated the idea. Jason and my son became best friends at 14, bonding over shared experiences at a summer camp. Coming from an African-American background, Jason's parents lived in a middle-class neighborhood and worked in delivery services. Although they attended different schools, Jason participated in the same after-school programs and often visited our home to play video games with my son. My wife frequently volunteered to give him rides and had developed a fondness for him over the years. Initially, I dismissed my suspicions, attributing my wife's actions to her inclination to support underprivileged youth through mentoring and volunteering. I appreciated Jason's maturity and ability to engage in adult conversations, finding him enjoyable company alongside our family. Days before our vacation, my wife and our 18-year-old daughter went shopping for trip essentials, purchasing items not only for my son but also gifts for Jason. While this gesture was consistent with her past generosity toward Jason during his younger years, it didn't raise any red flags at the time. The night before our departure, my son's girlfriend arrived in the morning, and later that evening, Jason also joined us. We all went out for dinner together, with my wife seated beside me and Jason next to our daughter. Despite her cheerful demeanor and occasional glances toward Jason during dinner, I dismissed it as her happiness in seeing everyone enjoy themselves. Later that night, I went to bed while my wife stayed up late with the kids, eventually joining me around 3 a.m. The next morning, as we prepared for our trip, I noticed my credit card was missing. While searching through my wife's luggage, I came across a revealing bikini, which I found inappropriate considering her age and role as a mother. Nevertheless, I assumed she had bought it as a surprise for me during our vacation. The following day, we flew business class to Carlisle Bay, a luxurious Caribbean resort on the southern shore of Antigua, renowned for its pristine beaches and tranquil turquoise waters. It was a breathtaking destination and one of the most beautiful resorts in Antigua. During our vacation's first day, I spent most of my time relaxing on the beach, reading investment articles and the Wall Street Journal. Meanwhile, my family explored scuba diving. In the evening, my wife, son, his girlfriend, and Jason ventured to a disco bar, continuing our vacation adventure. I decided to go to a restaurant with my daughter after my wife and the others returned home, about three hours later. I noticed my wife seemed slightly tipsy when she woke me later for intimacy, which turned out to be one of our most memorable experiences in months. I sensed something had deeply aroused her during her night out. The following day, I spent most of the day on the beach with my wife. In the evening, she mentioned going to a restaurant with our daughter, son, his girlfriend, and Jason. However, by 10 a.m. the next morning, my wife and Jason were nowhere to be found when my son returned with his girlfriend and my daughter. They informed me that my wife had gone on a local wildlife tour with Jason. Around 1 a.m. that same night, I woke up and realized my wife wasn't beside me. Curious, I ventured out to the living room to await her return. As I approached, I noticed some movement near the couch where my wife and Jason were awkwardly positioned with the TV on. My wife was dressed in a revealing wrap, and I recalled the crotchless bikini I had seen in her luggage earlier. Despite the open windows, there was an undeniable tension in the air, and I sensed an unmistakable intimacy between them. Although my hearing was fading, my other senses were heightened. I couldn't shake the suspicion that there had been a connection between Jason and my wife. If I had approached more cautiously, I might have caught them in a compromising situation. At that moment, I was speechless, overwhelmed by a sense of betrayal and deep humiliation. I returned to the bedroom, and my wife followed, attempting to act nonchalant. Despite her efforts to reassure me, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. That night, I refrained from confronting her, consumed by feelings of sadness, isolation, and shame. The combination of my hearing loss and the sense of betrayal made me feel increasingly invisible in my own family. The next day, I realized I lacked concrete evidence of what had transpired, leaving me in a state of uncertainty and emotional turmoil. From the moment I overheard her convincing Jason to join us on vacation to the almost incriminating situation I nearly stumbled upon, everything seemed to align. 
I strongly suspected my wife was involved in a physical relationship with my son's friend. Despite lacking clear evidence and having only circumstantial clues, my unease grew until I felt compelled to confront her. That morning, I called her into the room and admitted my suspicion about her closeness with Jason. I urged her to be honest and questioned how long this had been going on. Her reaction was uncharacteristic and unsettling, she vehemently denied everything and became defensive, resorting to name-calling and accusations. Her tactics were effective, leaving me without evidence to support my concerns. She dismissed my suspicions, insisting I was losing not just my hearing but also my sanity. Her resolve and persuasive demeanor escalated, raising her voice to a point where I feared our children might overhear. The thought of them discovering my unfounded jealousy toward someone they had known for over seven years was daunting and embarrassing. By the end of our confrontation, I found myself in a difficult position, forced to apologize. I realized I should have been more patient and gathered concrete evidence before confronting her. My emotions overtook my usual logical and rational demeanor, leading to a regrettable confrontation. The remainder of our vacation was tense and unpleasant. My wife treated me with disdain, making me feel like a burden and eroding some of the respect between us. Despite her denials, I remained convinced she was gaslighting me and maintaining a close relationship with Jason, especially during the incident on the couch, which I couldn't prove. Update, two days ago, I confronted my wife again about my suspicion of an affair with Jason. As expected, she vehemently denied it, leading to a strained atmosphere where even our children noticed the tension. We've kept our concerns private, navigating a vacation that was supposed to unite us as a family but instead drove a wedge between us. I've observed a change in her behavior since the confrontation. She's avoided spending time alone with Jason and instead engages in activities with all of us present. This contrasts sharply with previous vacations filled with shared activities like fishing trips and picnics that brought us closer together. Reflecting back, Jason had joined us on vacations before, even when he was 19. During those trips, I often retired early due to my preference for sleep while my wife, a night owl, remained active. If there was any impropriety back then, it could have occurred during my sleep. I can't shake the feeling that this affair has been ongoing for some time, especially given her frequent late-night dinners with married friends, which coincidentally increase when Jason is on college break. Our physical intimacy has evolved with age, while we still share private moments weekly, her increased libido contrasts with my declining interest. With only two days left in our vacation, the tension between my wife and me persists while everyone else enjoys themselves. Tonight, I aim to resolve this unease by suggesting a private dinner at a secluded restaurant to reset our connection and restore harmony before we return home. Later in the evening, while our children were occupied with other activities, I donned a floral shirt while she chose a sundress. The restaurant lay about 300 yards from our resort, prompting us to take a leisurely walk there. Having already reserved a table facing the ocean, we were treated to a breathtaking view upon arrival. Seated at a cozy table for two, I opted for a moment of silence, hoping she would initiate the conversation this time. Reflecting on my previous hasty accusations, I aimed to make her feel comfortable, offering apologies and allowing her space to speak freely. My strategy was to listen attentively, waiting for any slip that might confirm my suspicions. Over the years, I've placed unwavering trust in her and dedicated myself entirely. However, she has betrayed that trust by disrespecting me with an affair involving a man much younger than our son, all while denying it and attempting to shame me. I've been the backbone of our family, working tirelessly to secure the wealth and comfort she enjoys, even the dress she wore that evening was mine. Yet, she seems to believe I've achieved this through naivety. Admitting my own faults, I acknowledge being overly consumed by work and perhaps neglectful due to my hearing loss. It's a stark realization that I fail to scrutinize her actions closely enough. Discovering her affair, especially with someone she was meant to mentor, strikes particularly close to home. After an uncomfortable silence, my wife broke the ice. She apologized for not spending as much time with me during the vacation as usual and acknowledged how my suspicions regarding her and Jason had arisen due to their close friendship. Meeting my gaze directly, she asserted, I never slept with him, to which I silently nodded, opting not to engage further in words. She continued, expressing understanding of my recent emotional distance, partly attributing it to my hearing loss and her own attempts to reconnect. Furthermore, she regretted her earlier hurtful remarks, explaining that anger had clouded her judgment. Assuring me of her loyalty and commitment to our relationship, her initial words appeared positive, hinting at the possibility of a more open and sincere dialogue. 
In turn, I admitted that I hadn't been myself lately and expressed a genuine desire for us to rediscover closeness during the remainder of our vacation. Carefully avoiding any mention of Jason or the affair, we enjoyed a romantic lunch together and returned to the resort hand in hand. The rest of our stay passed uneventfully, with my wife making concerted efforts to spend time with me. Despite her efforts, however, something felt forced, as if her heart wasn't truly in it. Perhaps it was my mind playing tricks on me, now that the illusion of my once pure and loyal wife had been shattered by the revelation of her affair. Upon our reconciliation over dinner, everything appeared normal to our children, they suspected nothing out of the ordinary. However, I couldn't escape a nagging doubt that something was amiss. That's when it hit me, I had installed security cameras around our home, covering the front porch, backyard, both sides of the house, the living room, home theater, and game room. These cameras retained video for a month before deleting old footage. I hoped these recordings might reveal something crucial, reinforcing my sanity. Maintaining a facade of normalcy for the rest of our visit was crucial. To my wife, it seemed she had narrowly dodged a bullet, likely thinking she had skillfully altered my perspective. Her demeanor was that of an impeccable mother and wife, yet beneath the surface, I felt repelled by her ease in deceiving me. I suspected that this tendency might pervade our entire relationship. For someone who values honesty and loyalty above all in both personal and professional life, feeling betrayed was intolerable. With a mix of anticipation and restraint, I returned from our trip. Though I was cautious about raising my hopes, the fact that my wife knew about the cameras, and had even suggested their installation after seeing similar ones at a friend's home, made me wonder if she could have let her guard down. Despite knowing she might rush to delete the footage before I could check, my paranoia escalated. Not particularly tech-savvy, my wife wouldn't likely succeed in erasing the camera's memory on her own, but the fear lingered that she might try to sabotage the storage somehow. Upon landing, I feigned illness and convinced her to fetch a prescription, claiming I had left mine at the resort. This allowed me and the children to head home in a separate taxi, giving me the space I needed. Once home, I immediately transferred footage from the days leading up to our trip onto a portable hard drive, particularly the days our friend Jason had visited. The download took time but finished before my wife's return. I watched her closely, noting whether she checked or tampered with the camera storage, but she behaved as if the cameras were non-existent. It was past midnight by the time we finished unpacking. All I awaited was for everyone to fall asleep so I could scrutinize the footage. Once alone, I connected the hard drive to my laptop and focused on the recordings from Jason's stay, especially the night he spent in our guest bedroom accessible from the game room. As I skimmed through the video, I caught sight of my wife on the game room camera. I pressed play at normal speed and watched the clock hit 12.53 am. On the screen, my wife encountered Jason in the hallway, visible from the game room camera. He drew her into a kiss, and they shared a brief, intense moment. She playfully pushed him away and laughed as she exited the game room, while he teasingly tapped her on the backside. The scene was undeniably clear, even to the unobservant, it was obvious they were involved romantically. The realization quickened my pulse, yet there was a sense of relief in finally having tangible proof of her betrayal. Rather than anger, I felt a weight lifted, now equipped to confront her. As I was about to shut down my laptop, she reappeared in the footage at about 1.15 am, heading down the guest hallway, likely towards the bedroom where Jason was staying. She didn't return until 2.47 am. With Jason being the sole occupant due to my son's girlfriend also staying over, it was evident she had been with him for a private meeting. Following this, she returned to our bedroom where I slept, unaware of the unfolding events. The next day, armed with this evidence, I reached out to my lawyer who directed me to a divorce specialist. During our meeting, I grasped the significant financial toll the divorce could bring. Despite the potential financial hardship, I knew ending the marriage was unavoidable. Trust was shattered, she had not only deceived me but also shifted blame onto me, even accusing me of bias while betraying her role as a mentor to a young man. I resolved to keep the divorce details from my children to prevent any resentment towards their mother. Although I understood Jason might not have instigated the affair, I preferred he stay out of our lives to avoid constant reminders of the betrayal. The decision to disclose the affair to my children remained in limbo. However, I planned to leverage this information in negotiations with my wife. With the children away, I edited the video to highlight only the moments of her and Jason's intimate interaction from 1.15 am to 2.47 am. I called her to the room and played the edited footage. Within minutes, she recognized what was being shown and covered her face in dismay. 
She wouldn't face the screen or respond to any of my inquiries. I was eager to uncover the specifics of her relationship with Jason, such as its origins, but she remained silent, only managing to cry, fully conscious that there were no justifications for her actions. I seized the moment to express the pain she had caused me during our trip. My harsh words elicited a response only when I hinted at showing the video to our children. She immediately ceased crying, turned to me, and desperately pleaded on her knees. She vowed to do whatever I demanded to keep the video hidden from our children. I set forth my terms, she would agree to any alimony amount I chose, and we would finalize a divorce amicably under my conditions. In exchange, I consented to publicly state that our divorce was due to irreconcilable differences. The next day, we sat down with our children to announce the separation. My wife and our three kids were present, the kids asked many questions and urged us to reconsider. Despite this, my estranged wife upheld our agreed-upon narrative that we had both been unhappy for some time and that parting ways was the wisest choice. It was a heart-wrenching evening. She tried to control her emotions to appear as the initiator of the divorce, but it was evident that I was the one who had filed for it. Her struggle to mask her true feelings made it a profoundly sorrowful day for us all. I endeavored to remain composed but found myself weeping alone in the bedroom later that night, reflecting on yet another failed marriage. I pondered why I kept entering into marriage at all. Update asterisk. After disclosing our separation to our children, my kids, particularly my 16-year-old, had a tough time accepting the news. The day after, my eldest daughter approached me in the room that my wife and I formerly shared. Now, my wife was sleeping in the guest room. My daughter was confused about the sudden shift in our family dynamics, especially since we had appeared happy just days before on our vacation. She sat beside me, tearfully pressing for the real reason behind our divorce. Her persistent questioning nearly made me reveal more than I intended as she expressed how excluded they felt. However, I reassured her, stating that while her mother and I had a strong marriage and were grateful for our children, sometimes people simply fall out of love, which was the case with us. I gave her a deliberately vague response, but she was perceptive enough to sense there might be more to the story, possibly suspecting infidelity. She left, perhaps not wanting to confront a painful truth, especially since she was close to her mother. I anticipated she would eventually learn the full details. The following day, I visited my otolaryngologist and received a hearing aid that significantly improved my hearing. Meanwhile, my wife stayed secluded in her room. Our family dinners, once a staple, had dissolved, my children now took their meals to their rooms, and I barely saw my wife throughout the day. Alone at the dining table, I couldn't help feeling a mix of anger towards my wife and doubt about whether I was making the right decision. Before discovering the affair, I was content with our marriage, we were close, and she had always made me feel loved and prioritized, even above our children. Yet, I couldn't shake off the feelings of jealousy and betrayal, wondering if her affair was driven by a need that Jason, being readily available, could fulfill. I wished it had been someone from outside our close circle, not intertwined with our family life. It wouldn't have made it any less painful, but at least it wouldn't have involved someone my son views as a best friend and a vital part of our family. After my son's girlfriend departed, I took the opportunity to speak with my son. He didn't delve into the reasons for our separation, he was more focused on how I was coping. It seemed he had been talking with my daughter about it, judging by the way he framed his questions. By the next day, my wife had come out of her intense grief. She looked visibly distressed, with puffy eyes and messy hair, looking as though she hadn't taken care of herself for several days. That night, we both ate the dinner my daughter had made, sitting far apart from each other at the table. Ironically, I felt that I should be the one visibly upset, while my wife should be the one seeking forgiveness. Instead, I felt isolated and burdened, unable to share the truth of her infidelity with our children. My children seemed to be more worried about my wife, observing her evident distress. She is usually the spirited one at any gathering, known for her warmth and welcoming nature. Despite the deep hurt I felt, I had learned to mask my pain and pretend that everything was alright. The next day, my wife proposed we go to a restaurant we both liked to have a conversation. Although I was still reeling from her betrayal, I agreed, thinking it might help reduce the tension for the sake of our children. We drove there in silence and upon arrival, as we settled into our seats, she wasted no time in apologizing. She expressed sincere remorse for the pain she had caused and the trust she had violated, admitting how embarrassed and ashamed she felt. She acknowledged her selfishness and impulsiveness, not considering the effects of her actions on the people she loved. She affirmed her love for me and her wish to continue our life together. 
she admitted that the gravity of her actions only truly dawned on her after she was caught. I listened, then shared my perception that her remorse seemed more about being exposed than genuine regret. I highlighted the need for honesty with our children about the situation. At this, her face fell, she covered her head with her hands as though overwhelmed by a sudden headache. After a moment, she looked up at me with tears in her eyes, visibly struggling to control her breathing. Despite her emotional display, I remained firm and reiterated that the children deserved to know the truth. She hesitated, then floated the idea of me entering into an open marriage while she remained faithful. She implored me to delay telling the children the truth, suggesting we keep this matter between us. I maintained that she needed to disclose the truth. Upon my insistence, she revealed that the affair had been ongoing for six years, starting when Jason was still in high school. She detailed how their affair began unexpectedly during our youngest daughter's basketball game, which our son attended and where he invited Jason. The game was delayed, and while our daughter practiced, my wife, needing some fresh air, walked out with Jason following her. They ended up in her minivan, and what started as a casual conversation escalated to a kiss and more, all happening in the parking lot of the high school. She confessed to feeling guilty and degraded about their secret encounters, which they had vowed not to repeat or disclose. Despite this promise, their clandestine meetings continued over the years. Before our vacation, she hadn't seen him for over six months and claimed she hadn't thought about their affair until Jason arrived for the vacation. I suspected she was omitting parts of the story, as I knew Jason hadn't just shown up uninvited. After some pressing, she admitted that she had urged him to come because she wanted to meet him again and had long harbored the idea of vacationing with him, seeing it as an opportunity. She confessed that they had been intimate both before and during the vacation, having been caught by security cameras just a day before our trip started. She explained that while she feels a strong physical attraction to Jason, she still loves me deeply. She tried to reassure me by saying their connection was purely physical, perhaps to lessen the hurt. She admitted that her sexual desires had intensified with age, and since I was less inclined toward intimacy, it left her feeling continually unsatisfied and frustrated. Despite her deep love for me, she had turned to Jason as a way to fulfill her needs, eventually normalizing the affair. She disclosed that she had sought help from a psychotherapist and was prescribed antidepressants, which are used for treating a range of conditions including compulsive sexual behaviors. However, she had stopped taking the medication due to side effects and instead found some relief through therapy and using adult toys, though these measures were insufficient to stop the affair. She revealed this information, which was previously undisclosed to me, making me feel both shocked and guilty. I wondered if I had known sooner, would I have considered seeking medical help to align with her desires? When I questioned why she hadn't been open about this earlier, she said she had hinted at it but never elaborated, feeling that I had become distant in our intimacy. She pointed out my less frequent interest in intimacy compared to her daily desires, mentioning instances where I had rejected her advances while she often initiated. She acknowledged that her sexual drive was unusually high and not meant to assign blame. She wanted to work on herself, recognizing the challenges I was already facing. After our conversation, my initial anger began to subside, replaced by an understanding of her struggles with what seemed like an obsessive need for intimacy, a need she had tried to manage, though I had previously underestimated its seriousness. Feeling she might be suffering from a psychological issue and had been struggling with it, it was somewhat comforting to grasp her perspective. However, regardless of her state, her actions had violated our marriage vows, and I believed there should be consequences. Yet, this insight led me to reconsider the decision to divorce. I sought advice from my therapist, who suggested that my wife completely sever ties with Jason to begin healing our relationship. He was unsure about disclosing the affair to our children, considering their mental well-being and the potential repercussions of Jason possibly informing them himself. Nevertheless, controlling the narrative was crucial. He didn't have a strong opinion on whether to tell the children but recommended a probation period of two to three months to see if my feelings about the divorce remained unchanged. He also suggested individual counseling for us both and couples therapy to provide a platform for my wife to express herself before an impartial observer. After the therapy session, I was still uncertain about my feelings but considered our children's well-being, our long-standing relationship, and the happiness we once shared. I decided to give the probation period a chance. That evening, I discussed the terms with my wife, she must cut all contact with Jason and never meet or communicate with him again. We would also inform our son and oldest daughter about the affair, expecting them to also cease contact with Jason. I was clear that any breach of these terms would lead to resuming the divorce proceedings. 
She admitted her mistake and expressed her readiness to do whatever it took to save our marriage, despite fearing how our children would see her. She agreed to keep the details vague and to accept whatever consequences followed. Tension in our home began to diminish gradually. My children were unsure about the status of the divorce, wondering if it was still proceeding, although they hadn't asked me directly. Slowly, family dinners resumed, and a sense of normalcy started to return, even though my wife and I continued to sleep in separate rooms. After discussing with my wife the necessity of disclosing her affair to our son and eldest daughter, we decided to address it one evening after dinner. We sent our youngest daughter to her room and gathered with my son and oldest daughter around the dining table. I started by explaining that their mother's actions had initially driven me to consider divorce, but we were now attempting reconciliation, which required her to admit her wrongdoings. When it was my wife's turn to speak, she struggled to find the right words, her face streaked with tears as our children looked on, their expressions a mix of curiosity and concern. It was hard to say if her tears were genuine or part of an attempt to elicit sympathy, a tactic I suspected she might employ. She began by acknowledging her deep regret and embarrassment over her indiscretion with Jason, labeling it a significant error. The atmosphere grew tense, I glanced at my children to see their reactions. Avoiding eye contact, she kept her head bowed in shame. As she confessed, my daughter's expression turned to one of shock while my son burst out in anger, shouting expletives before storming off to his room, slamming the door. I remained seated, facing my wife across the table, with my daughter two chairs to my right, still in disbelief. After a moment of silence, she whispered audibly, I knew it. I stayed put, watching as the scene unfolded, my feelings a mixture of sadness and confusion. My daughter came over to offer a hug, and although I was initially unresponsive, she held on to me tightly. My wife continued to weep openly, and I could tell my daughter was also crying. Seeing my wife so deeply distressed deeply affected me, I had never witnessed her in such a state of turmoil. After some time, she rose and withdrew to the guest room, closing the door firmly behind her. My daughter checked on my well-being, and I reassured her that I was managing okay. I shared with her that I had enough time to process everything, and although I hadn't forgiven her mother, I understood the circumstances that led to the affair. I expressed my intention of keeping them informed, which is why I had insisted on her mother disclosing the truth. That night, I went to sleep with peace of mind, ready to embrace a fresh start with transparency, preferring the challenges of truth over the comfort of deceit. The next morning, my daughter made breakfast, while my wife stayed secluded in her room, and my son had already left home, still grappling with his emotions and planning to move away from the tension at home. During the morning, I chatted with my daughters, particularly my eldest, who tried to shift my focus from the betrayal and inject some optimism into our conversation. By afternoon, my wife had not yet appeared, which troubled my daughter since they had errands to run and were falling behind schedule. She knocked on the door persistently for about ten minutes, but there was no response from inside. As evening arrived and there was still no sign of my wife, my concern deepened. I decided to check on her myself, but she did not answer the door. I had hoped for some improvement, but it seemed she was struggling severely, possibly too embarrassed or overwhelmed to face our children. This behavior was becoming increasingly concerning. She missed dinner again, and my son still hadn't returned. I phoned him and learned he was staying at a friend's. Thus, it was just me and my two daughters at the dinner table that night. When morning came and still no word from my wife, I felt something was seriously wrong. With my eldest daughter's assistance, I forced the door open, only to find it bolted from inside. When we finally got inside, we found my wife unresponsive under the covers, with pills and a glass of water nearby. I immediately told my daughter to call 911 as I checked for a pulse, only to find her body had begun to discolor, indicating she had been deceased for almost a day. My younger daughter broke down, trying to rouse her mother, while my eldest was frantically speaking to emergency services. It was clear, even without medical training, that she had passed away the day before. I was struck with a paralyzing mix of shock and guilt, overwhelmed by the thought that I might be to blame. It took some time before I could collect myself. By then, the ambulance crew was ready to transport her, and my son, having been informed by someone, arrived and was inconsolable. I spent most of that night discussing the situation with investigators. Don't forget to subscribe, like and click on the little bell icon for notifications of new stories.